Why does one bike fit you and another one doesn't? Why does your bike feel the way it does to ride? Well, the answer lies in its geometry. The angles and distances between key points on your bike, like the wheels or the bottom bracket axle or the steerer tube up here. But you could look at a chart of your bike geometry for weeks and still not gather any information whatsoever. So let me try and enlighten you. This is what you need to know about bike geometry. So perhaps most importantly then, how do you tell at a glance from looking at a bike geometry chart whether a bike is going to fit you or not? Well, I suppose if the bikes are labelled small, medium or large, you could probably have quite a good guess. If you know a little bit more about bikes, then you might look at the seat tube length and the top tube length, and they will give you a pretty good idea about whether or not you can get your saddle or your handlebars in roughly the right place. Except that they won't give you a particularly accurate perspective over whether a bike will fit you or not, because there are so many other factors affecting it. And so what you really need to do is look for two key numbers, the reach and the stack. And these are calculated using the bottom bracket as the origin. So the reach is how far in front of the bottom bracket this point here is, and the stack is how much higher than the bottom bracket this point here is. And the reason they're so important is because while you can almost always get your saddle in the right position in relation to the pedals, the position that's much harder to adjust is your handlebars. And if you carry out any major changes up here, then as we're gonna see in a moment, it can significantly affect the way your bike handles. So this whole point can be very neatly illustrated by looking at Trex Imonda. So it's available in two different types of geometry, racy H1 and very slightly more relaxed H2. And in my size, a size 56, the effective top tube is exactly the same. But when you look at reach and stack, the reach is eight millimeters longer and the stack is 28 millimeters lower on the H1, meaning that my handlebars will be significantly further away from my saddle on that bike. The way your bike handles, the way it feels to ride, is governed by four key measurements. The first of which is trail. And to explain it, I'm gonna need a pointer. So trail is a product of your head tube angle and your fork rake. Head tube angle being the angle of your steerer tube here, and then fork rake referring to the distance between your front wheel axle and your virtual head angle line. Now, if you change either of those, you're gonna significantly alter the way your bike handles. And that change can be summed up by the trail, which is the distance between the contact patch of your front tire and that steerer tube angle. Bikes with less trail often have steeper head angles and forks with less rake, and they can feel really fast to handle, but also a little bit nervous and a little bit twitchy. They essentially need less input from your hands in order to get a response from the bike. Bikes with more trail, however, tend to have shallower head angles and forks with less rake, and they can feel really stable at high speeds, but also a little bit boring. And in fact, they can also be quite hard to ride out of the saddle. Bottom bracket drop will also tell you a lot about how your bike handles. And it refers to the distance your bottom bracket axle sits below your wheel axles. So effectively how low you sit on the bike. And a bike with a big bottom bracket drop tends to corner really well. It responds quickly to change of direction. It's easier to lean and that's because you have a lower center of mass. And conversely, a bike with less bottom bracket drop is gonna feel more stable at slower speeds, more stable in a straight line, but be a little bit reluctant to corner. It requires more steering input from your handlebars. So generally speaking then, bikes with more bottom bracket drop tend to be nicer to ride, but there is a big trade-off and that comes with pedal clearance. So the more bottom bracket drop you have, the closer your pedals will be to the ground. And hitting your pedal on the ground is a really bad thing. It can be disastrous. So you need to balance the length of your cranks versus your bottom bracket drop. To illustrate the point, track bikes have a really low bottom bracket drop in order that you can keep pedaling around the corners on a velodrome. But yet, get them out onto the open road and they don't feel anywhere near as nice as a road bike which has a much greater bottom bracket drop. Chainstay length affects the wheelbase of your bike, which is the distance between your front and your rear wheel axles. Longer wheelbase bikes tend to be more stable, but are slower to turn. Shorter wheelbase, shorter chainstay bikes tend to be much more nimble, aggressive, and fast handling. And the difference of just 10 to 20 millimeters on your chainstays can make a significant difference. And it's for this reason that bike manufacturers have been struggling to make disc brake bikes on road bikes 
feel responsive enough because discs, until very recently when Shimano released their new Dura-Ace group set, have required a minimum length of chain stay in order for your gears to work effectively. And that minimum length meant that the bike felt more stable, but less nimble. The final piece of this bike handling puzzle actually has nothing to do with frame geometry at all. It refers to stem length and the reach and width of your handlebars. So a longer stem will slow the handling of your bike down significantly. So it will require more input from your hands in order to get the front wheel to turn. Likewise, bars with longer reach and indeed wider handlebars will do the same thing. So you can significantly affect the way your bike handles by using a really short or a really long stem. Therefore, that's reason again to pay attention to your reach and stack measurements, because otherwise you could seriously compromise the way a bike manufacturer intended a bike to feel. Now the really complicated thing about all of this is that on its own, each measurement is not going to tell you how a bike feels to ride. They all rely on each other, which is why you need to see a frame geometry chart in its entirety in order to get the bigger picture and one where the manufacturer tells you the trail and also the bottom bracket drop measurements as well, because not all manufacturers do. But what can be quite good fun, and I mean it in a really nerdy way, is to ride two different bikes and then look at a frame geometry chart to find out exactly why each bike rides the way it does. Believe me, that is actually quite good fun. Anyway, to find out a little bit more about how to measure reach and stack on your bike, then we've got a video explaining how to measure your position. And so if you click just up there, then you get through to that one. That is really crucial information when looking at this kind of stuff. Or to actually get an idea of where your handlebar should be in relation to your seat, then why not click just down there and we tell you your perfect reach and stack measurements. Finally, make sure you subscribe to GCN. To do that, just click on the globe.